Hello and welcome to Focus on CR, an in-depth look at the faculty, students, and staff of College of the Redwoods. Hello and welcome to Focus on CR. This is a show where we talk directly to faculty, students, staff, and friends of College of the Redwoods. My name is Valerie Elder and I'll be your host. And today we're speaking with Brian Newkirk and we will learn a little bit more about the CR music program. Brian, thanks for being here today. You're welcome, glad you asked me. <laughs> So I'm hoping to start things out by having you just tell me a little bit about what your role is here at the college. So I'm the band director here. Uh, my, my actual title is, uh, well, it's a title that just kind of grew out of what I added to my, my teaching load. So I'm the director of instrumental music. So I teach concert band. It's called Jazz Orchestra, and then I have three beginning band classes and three guitar classes. Wow, that's an amazing diversity. <laughs> so how did you get started in music? And I know it might be a long story, but I'll, I'll, give me a little bit of your background. I'll condense it. <laughs> so I started playing clarinet when I was nine years old, and then switched over to saxophone in junior high school, and then I played saxophone as my main instrument from then until now. And when I was uh, 12 years old, I decided I wanted to be a band director like my mentor. Wow. So I went all the way through junior high, high school, all the way through college, through my masters with one goal in mind. And so I'm now in my 51st year of teaching. That's amazing. Teaching music. <laughs> That's amazing. I love when people achieve those goals. And you're teaching these band classes. Um, what do you find is most of the background of students in your classes? Have they been trained in music before coming here? Are they very entry level, picking up music for the first time? It's a mixed bag. Some students come in already knowing how to play an instrument and then they want to learn something else. And then I have, uh, <clears throat> as an example, I have one student now in my uh, intermediate guitar class who is a really fine guitarist. She can't read a stitch of music. So I'm teaching her how to read music and, you know, tie that into playing. So I have a real variety. Some, I'll just share this, some come in they don't know one end of an instrument from the other. They no, don't know any of the mechanics of it and they don't know how to read music and so that's my job. And music is a whole different language. A lot of people that aren't musicians, they'll look at a sheet of music and <laughs> they'll think, oh my gosh, I can't do this. But you can. And I can teach anybody to play. I don't mean that in a prideful way, it's just that with the techniques I've used over my, my career, I can teach anybody to play. <laughs> and what kind of impact do you see that that has on students? If they start out maybe, you know, not knowing how to use an instrument and by the end they can read music, for example. Well, there's always, I would say 99% of the time there's great joy for them. I have a few students that get frustrated <laughs> with themselves, as I'm sure you understand, and they, they aren't successful. And it's almost, it's almost as if uh, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. It's the same with teaching music. I try to give them all the tools and, and have a uh, open, classroom setting for them but they have to be willing to try so but almost everybody in there is just you know come out of it knowing how to play an instrument 
Yeah, and let's speak more about this joy aspect. So the days are getting shorter. It's a beautiful sunny day outside of the studio today, but we know many of these days in the winter here in Humboldt are full with rain. So I kind of think about music this time of year as being a real joy to life and something that brings light mm -hmm. to a lot of people. So how do you feel like, like the CR music program, for example, or just a student learning music at a basic level, you know, what does that sort of provide to our community? Well, it gives them an outlet. And a lot of times they want to achieve this for their own self-satisfaction. -satisf and uh, I myself with my, um, I don't try to teach everybody to be classically trained. I just want people to enjoy music. I, and I've, I've, since I started teaching in 1973, it's always been the same. I want music to be fun and enjoyable, and it should be something that each individual gets something out of it. I'm not trying to make a, you know, a bunch of professional musicians. That's not my goal. It's just to teach people how to play and enjoy it. And music is a lifelong skill. And you don't have to be perfect. As I, st I just told one of my students the other day, if you play a wrong note, it's just like water under the bridge. Once it's gone, don't worry about it. Just keep going. So I try to make it really, you know, positive. In some ways, that's a good mantra for life, right? It is, <laughs> yeah. But some of our students here at College of the Redwoods might be preparing for the music program at Cal Poly Humboldt. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about what role CR plays in that transfer for us? So the classes we offer here are all CSU and UC transferable. So if a student were to go, well, there's too many to name, but you know, to, to most universities, private universities as well, um, they can, the matriculation is even. So the, the materials I teach and what I teach for beginning brass or beginning guitar, concert band, what have you, it's the same basic formula that's being used at the UCs and the state universities. So it's all transferable. So when students take a class from me here, Everything that they do can be used at the next level. And so a student might be taking music classes for personal enrichment, mm -hmm. general education, or <coughs> maybe to transfer to Cal Poly Humboldt and pursue a degree in music right. specifically. Ask that again, sorry. Oh yeah, that's okay. So there's sort of several options. Students might be taking a class here for personal enrichment, they might be getting general education requirements, or they might be transferring to Cal Poly Humboldt to pursue a degree in music. Those are sort of the three main options that students will have, or is there more? That's pretty much it, yeah. And what music classes are, um, all, you know, I know there's too many to list, um, but what other types of classes within the department can students take? No, I can do it quickly. So, okay. so we offer I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> we offer um, piano instruction starting with uh, well, it's kind of a, a general intro to music, and then it moves on from there. And then uh, we have a uh, really highly qualified piano instructor here, Dr. Macon. And his students that come out of there are highly trained. He's very good. So we've got piano. Uh, we also have voice that we teach. That's uh, We don't have a choir anymore. We used to. But now we have a, a vo voice class. And then we also have... Um, I don't remember what the class is called, but it's it's a music history class, and uh, we've got uh, I'm drawing a blank. 
what's the other class he teaches? So there's actually only three instructors now. It's okay. Dr. Macon, myself, and Annika Boxstrom. That's it. So we have overall the instrumental programs covered by me, all the theory. Oh my gosh, that's the one I forgot. We have a great theory program mm -hmm. here. And the students that leave here with studies in theory are way advanced when they get to the other schools. So they're fully prepared. So that's what we offer. That's wonderful, that's wonderful. I understand that you uh, also direct the College of the Redwoods Big Band. Mm -hmm. What is the Big Band? Tell us all about it. Well, it's been called many things over the years. So getting back to me for just a moment, when I first started playing uh, in junior high school, I played in what was called the stage band. Okay. My music teacher that started me on the clarinet played professionally back in the 40s and 50s with big bands. And so that love that he had, he transferred to me. He transferred all his students. And uh, we kept in touch all the time, but he was always in, in, into, you know, the big band jazz music. When I went to high school, it was called the dance band. And then when I got to uh, Cal State University, uh, Los Angeles, we were called the big band. And the director there was um, uh, clarinet virtuoso Buddy Collette, and he chose that name. And so there's a lot of different names that are used. And then when I took over the group here in 2017, uh, it was called the Jazz Orchestra. And that's a term that's used by a, a lot of professionals. But I just, uh, I used to play professionally in a group down in Los Angeles called the Duffy Atkinson Big Band. And it was a real eclectic mix of musicians. But I had the great honor and pr privilege of playing with a couple of guys that played with Tommy Dorsey and Glenn Miller back in the big band days. So I just, this year, I just changed the name. Oh. So it's listed as Jazz Orchestra. Okay. But then I just decided I'm going to call it a big band. And since I'm the director, I get to do that. <laughs> <laughs> So it's uh, getting back to your question, which I didn't answer. Um, it's five saxes, four trombones, four trumpets, and a rhythm section. And we play swing music. And if anyone has ever heard of Count Basie, mm -hmm. that's a real popular name. We basically are structured like that. It's a, it's a Count Basie, but it's called, the Count Basie is called the Count Basie Orchestra but we're called the CR Big Band. And we play um, a variety of music, but uh, for instance, Sunday, we're playing at the Fortuna Christmas Festival, and we're gonna be playing swing charts, and they're all Christmas. So, you know, there's different areas you can play in. So that's what a big band is. And about how many performances a year does the band participate in the big band yeah Ugh. how many I can get them <laughs> what types of events is the big yeah band we uh, so we play at local venues around here the Septon Trio winery and Arcata uh, we do benefit concerts that's a big one for me because I was given so much as a student and early in my career that I want to give back. So we've done a benefit count concert uh, last month at Hoopa High School. I taught there for 20 years. Wow. So uh, Fieldbrook School, Trinidad School. So we have, I would say total, we probably do about 20 performances a year between fall and spring semester. And how does someone join the big band? Is this an audition? Is it a course? I'm so glad you asked that. Because <laughs> there's been some trouble with that here lately. So it used to be listed in the catalog. 
as audition. Oh. And then somebody took it out. Oh. I don't know who, but somebody <laughs> took it out. So the, the, the big band, uh, unless somebody is a really experienced, qualified musicians, musician, they have to audition for it. So there's got to be a certain caliber that, of music that they have to be able to play. And I'll just add this. Um, the, the big band here plays at the professional level. It's, it's a really, really highly qualified group. So if people come into that, they, they've got to be able to play. And if not, it's, it's a struggle. So they have to audition with me. And I have a whole list of things that I require of them, but I won't go into it now. <laughs> But it sounds like the CR Music program has something for everyone wanting to pick up an instrument for the first time to professional level performance, quality music. That's pretty yeah. amazing. So with a big band, people have to be experienced. Mm -hmm. um, my, my drummer, the guy that plays Kit in there, he's the band director at Toddy Thomas and Fortuna Middle School, but he has a double masters in music. Wow. And he is, he, he is a incredible mallet player and and one of his masters I believe is in uh, vibraphone from New Orleans University that's just an example I've, I've got musicians from all different walks of life life and uh, experiences so uh, the concert band though is open to anybody to join at any time and they don't have to have the advanced skill levels. So I'll just say it like this. If, for instance, you, if you played an instrument when you were a kid mm -hmm. and then you didn't for 30 years or whatever and all of a sudden you wanted to come in and say play the clarinet. Piano actually. Piano, it's a great instrument. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> But if it were that, you would come in and I'd start you off with just simplified versions of the music we're doing. I've had students that have come in and haven't played for 40 years. And then they just kind of like getting back on the horse, little by little. And now they're playing in the band. And the pl band plays pretty well, pretty well. And so what does the concert performance <clears throat> scene look like then for students that are participating? So for the concert band, it's uh, twice a year, sometimes three times a year. We play at commencement. Right. And then although this last year, the big band played at commencement. And then uh, we do our standard concerts at the end of the semester. For instance, the concert band and big band are playing this coming Wednesday for the final concert. So, but for the concert band, that, that's pretty much it. And we also have a senior program. I didn't know that. Tell and us that's, about that. that comes from the state, and it's called the SR, <clears throat> SR-222 program. So seniors can sign up, and this is the way the state set it up. A senior, anybody that signs up has to be between 18 and like 150. Oh, okay. So there's no real age requirement for it. Uh, you can't sign up under, under that. But with this program, you can sign up for the class at any time you want. And you don't get credit for it. It's free. But we, the college, get reimbursed as, they're, as if they're a full-time student. So it's, it's a great program for the college. So we, we get some funding for that. And that is open for the concert band. It's open for all three of my guitar classes and all three of my beginning band classes. So with your classes, you're teaching everything from how to use an instrument in your, you know, beginning instrument classes. What's kind of covered in a beginning band class, for example? 
this is an instrument. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still covering basic instrument use. Yeah, those and things. so okay. the pedagogy I use is the same as teaching violin, voice, choir, what have you. You start with the basics and move on from there, and everybody comes in at a different skill level. So. And are you learning a little bit about how to work together and play the pieces as a group? They start off at, as individuals, and then it gets into an ensemble. Okay. For instance, my guitar classes, we're, uh, we're doing our final next Tuesday in the, recit in the new recital hall, and it's, uh, it's all the guitar students together. And so it's a guitar ensemble. And they've done very well, and some of them have never played guitar before. So that's an example of how the, you know, they work together. So Brian, you've listed a few performances that are coming up, but is, are there any others we should mark on our calendar? This coming New Year's Eve, the big band's playing at the Creamery in Arcata for a, uh, a dance there. And it, we, we're playing from 9 to 11. The dance goes from uh, eight till one. So there's gonna be DJ music and then we're gonna be part of it. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. So if someone wants more information <coughs> about the big band or wants to get in contact with you, how should they do that? Best way is through uh, calling the, the main office in Creative Arts and that would be, uh, should I give the phone number? 707-476-4559. Okay. Or, that's a good way to get in touch with me. The other is my email. And that's Brian, all lowercase, Brian, B-R-I-A-N-A, -A, hyphen, Newkirk, N-E-W-K-I-R-K, at redwoods.edu. Great, thank you. Hmm? Well, that's about all we have time for today. I'd like to thank my guest, Brian Newkirk, and uh, appreciate your time being here and sharing information about the CR Music Program and the big band. Very exciting stuff. It's so important for our community. If you would like to find out more about the programs here at College of the Redwoods, you can visit our website, redwoods.edu, to learn about our community and educational offerings. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Focus on CR. Music